Well, welcome back to Life on Cars, guys. Hope you're all well. So, yeah, a couple of episodes ago, we went to the NY500 Cafe in Pickering. You might remember the episode. And on the way back, the engine management light came on again, referring back to the episode where I did the code read. And it came up with that code for rich mixture. So I got the exact same code again. So I went through all the sensors using my scan tool and everything seems to be giving off the right reading. So I've gone for the easiest option first and I've decided to replace the mass airflow meter and see if that makes a difference. So come on, let's find out what's involved in changing the mass airflow meter on a Jaguar XK X1 4.2. Let's go. Right, we need to get into this area here. Now, if you watch me do the air filter video a while back, you'll have seen me get into here before. So I'm just going to quickly get into here by taking these um, Allen key, sorry, T socket um, nuts out. And then we'll uh, get into where the mass airflow meter is. T30s if you're interested. We'll get these off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this forward like this so I can see the, the air filter and the mass airflow meter. And I'm going to use a bungee strap to, uh, to keep that trim from flying back. Just round the uh, top suspension leg, like that. So this is the mass airflow meter here. And what I need to do is take the air filter out of the way. So my one's been slightly modified. I've got a, an extra Phillips screw. Oops, just bring that up a bit. Here, next to the original um, T socket, which is a T... 20 because they rounded off so somebody put an extra Phillips screw in but that should come out now so yeah I've got them unscrewed so I should be able to take the air cleaner out of the way like that and then there's that bolt there which needs to come out and I'm going to take off this clamp for the intake pipe so I can take all this out and work on the a uh, mass airflow meter when it's off the car. So that one, that one up there is a 10 millimeter. I'm just going to take that out. There we are. And then I'm going to undo this now. And hopefully we can extract this air box from the uh, vehicle so I can get to the screws that hold the mass airflow meter in. Right, that's the Jubilee Salak. So what I've done now is I've pulled that down out of the intake pipe. And I'm going to take this the connector off now for the mass airflow meter. Might need a little bit of encouragement because it's been on since it was a car. There we are, look. Right, that's that off. 
took that away. Actually, a, T, a T20 fits that. So there's the easy one out, there's the front one out. Right, I need to try and get my hand around now and get the back one. Right, I can't really see what I'm doing to get behind there. But I think if I just drop this lower tray down a little bit, I can I can actually get the whole air box out, which will be easier than trying to fiddle on, um, trying to get my hand around the back of there. There isn't any room, so I'm just gonna take a couple of bolts from the under tray, and then this whole air box should come out. You may find on yours, if you haven't done this, had this tray off before, that all these are in a mess and they're all rusty. But on my car, they're all brand new, so they should drop out. I think I only need these three out. And then it should allow the air box enough room to come out. We'll soon find out. For the sake of removing these few under tray bolts, it's gonna be easier than messing on, I think. Right. Let's see, I might take one more out, oh, that front one there. Right, there we are, it's come out. So yeah, there's a there's a trunk in here that goes on at the back of the bumper and then there's a locating peg as well so just watch out for those when you're putting it back together but we can see the I think I would have had problems look trying to get that bolt out there in situ because it's a bit rusty so I'm glad I've took it off and uh, so we need to take that off now and then get to the bolt that hold the mass airflow meter on I'm guessing that this is the original mass airflow meter on, on my car from new there's a rubber seal there right Denzo. Okay, so we'll take these two screws out here and then we'll extract the uh, the sensor. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do this when you've got it in your hand than trying to fiddle on with the whole thing in the cart. Right, two little screws out. And then that comes out of there. Again, another little rubber seal on there. So I think I'll give that a little wash and then uh, we'll put the new sensor in. Right, I've given the housing a bit of a clean. But I've decided that I'm going to um, give the airbox a bit of a clean as well. That little gauze filled to lifts out look. Um, there's some bits in there. So I'm going to give that a little wash out. And I'm also going to um, pop that seal off. And I'm going to give all this. There's a lot of grit and stuff. So I'm just going to give this a little wash off as well. Because we don't want any air leaks through here. Otherwise, that could be giving us the same problem. So, just bear with me while I give this uh, this air box a little rinse off as well. All right, got everything cleaned down. I've got all the the bits out of the wire gauze, and I've got the air box cleaned, and uh, I've given that little sealer a rub over. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of. Um, silicon spray on that just to uh, lube him up a bit 
can't be a bit of loop. Right. Now that feels a lot more slippy. Just to help things go back together and seal. So we'll pop that back in. I think that only goes in one way, you know, so uh, yeah, so you can't get it wrong. It goes in like that. Right, before we put anything else, I'm going to put our new mass airflow meter in. So this is what I've got here. Funnily enough, it actually has a different part number. Um, whether it's superseded or whatever, but it looks exactly the same in other respects. This one was made in Spain, that one was made in Japan. Denso uh, 197400 2090 is the one I've got. But yeah, uh, identical in every other respect. So it uh, comes with a new seal on there, look. So that's good. So we'll have that uh, pop back in. Actually, you know, I might just put a tiny bit of uh, silicon around there like that. Just uh, just so the seal pops in nice. There we are. Right. Get the screws in. Yeah, I'm hoping that this might fix my uh, intermittent engine management light. It keeps coming on because I'm slightly confused at the moment because, like I said at the start of the video, all the sensors are giving out the right reading, including the mass airflow meter was giving out the right reading, but, um, but you never know. It could be losing its parameters as you're going along, so... Right. Let's have that back on there. Right. Again, you can't get these wrong because the holes only line up in the right way. Let's just make sure that's going back on properly. Yep, there we are. It's nice and snug. Right, get them screws back in. Might swap them over actually. So the uh, cleaner ones at the at the bottom. Right, that's back in snug. There we go, new mass airflow meter installed. Okay. See that there, I'm gonna spray a bit of uh, silicon on that where it, where the air box goes onto the um, air intake just so it slips on canny. Just make sure you've got this air pipe back on correctly. You can get your hand up from underneath. If you've dropped the lower trim off, you can get your hand up and uh, reattach it. You'll know if it's on right because it will click into place. Right, I'm going to retighten the uh, Jubilee clip on the intake pipe. Nice and snug. That. I'm going to reconnect the connector 
like that and I'm going to pop the air filter back in obviously if you haven't changed your air filter recently now's a good time to do it mine is new so happy days if you're wondering what this is I've just got a bit of grease around the screw heads to stop them from corroding in. Right, I'm going to tighten that down and then I'm going to, before I put all the lower trim back on, I'm going to make sure the car runs properly. So I am going to uh, do a code clear before I start the car using my trusty code device, which you can see on a different episode, which I'll put a picture of the episode on the screen. Right, I've cleared the coat, so I'm going to just start it up and I'll see how it runs. It'll have to learn that new sensor, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if it'll come down to um, to idle when it's warmed up a bit. It's coming down now. I just want to make sure it's got a steady idle before I start putting everything back together and then I'll road test it. Yep, that seems steady enough. No warning lights. Right, I'll box it up and then I'll road test it. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done the mass airflow meter and everything so far seems to be fine. And dare I say it, I think the throttle response is slightly better. Could, could be my imagination, I don't know. But anyway, if anything changes, I'll let you know. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And check out the playlists around the channel as well, because there might be something else that you find useful on the Jaguar XK. There's quite an extensive playlist now on this vehicle. But... Um, but yeah, I need it right because I'm planning to do a road trip um, in September in the Jag. I'm going to do the, uh, the North Coast 500 Scotland. So I'm looking forward to that. So it needs to be right for that. So, but anyway, it seems to be behaving itself again for now. So uh, maybe it was this all along. I don't know. So all I've got left to say is take care drive safely and I'll see you all again very soon with something else on life on cars. Stay safe guys. Bye bye.